I told you earlier that I was the global network outreach for HOSA, but I actually ended up doing that as an outcome of my work with the US Department of Defense. Um, health as a team sport is a concept that came out of that think tank. And so I'm gonna share with you some of the findings and the outcomes. One tells a little story. I was in um, Stanford uh, at a special showing of Dear White People, uh, the, the movie, where the director was there and Spike Jones was there. And then, then we had a debrief with young people about why, why things that are a problem in, in, in colleges. And I was struck by their stories that they felt, these young people felt that the older generation were the problem. <laughs> and I was sitting in there thinking, no, we're not. But also here in the West Coast, we think perhaps our leaders are the problem. The government is the problem. Somebody else is the problem. And what I'm here to say is that health is a team sport. Life is a team sport. And this is not new news. 2,300, 400 years ago, Herophiles, the physician to Alexander the Great, so he had a good proof point, <laughs> said, when health is absent, wisdom cannot reveal itself. Art cannot be manifest. Strength cannot be exerted. Wealth is useless and reason is powerless. So that's not a compelling why we should care. I don't know what is. So why health is a team sport? Because sports is a very natural metaphor. We play sports. I, I mean, nobody gets born knowing how to do, hit a baseball. You gotta try, you gotta hit, you, you've got bonding with parents, with other kids. It's all part of a learning loop. And this harks back to Doug Engelbart talking about networked improvement communities we have to learn. One way is to be vulnerable, one way is to fail, but in, in the end, we're all trying to learn. And Doug and general learning concepts are that you've got to have some kind of process. So plan, do, study, act is now a process that's being used in many educational areas, but it's also being used in health. Around the country are 9,000 community health centers all doing plan, do, study, act. These health centers are addressing the needs of the most poor and vulnerable in the community. These centers were set up because of a Peace Corps young person came back and said, we have in our own cities and towns the same problems that I saw in Africa and Botswana, and we've got to address it. And he went to the governor of Mississippi who said, no, this is in the, um, in the 60s. So he went to his own governor in Massachusetts who said yes, and that's how these community health centers have been started. They are set up under the guidance of the Department of the Health and Human Services. And I have the honor and privilege of working with Dr. Ahmed Calvo, who's the senior medical officer overseeing all the delivery of services for these community health centers. And he is a follower of Doug Engelbart. So in 1996, he began them on a process of plan, do, study, act. I wanna let the young people know, you have allies everywhere. They are just well hidden in gray hairs and perhaps, you know, <laughs> saggy muscles. So look out for them. It's like gold. Find those people. Certainly in the community health centers, the idea of reducing health disparities. Since 96 to now, Ahmed Calvo, with the help of the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, have reduced health disparities so that in many cases that delivery of health to the poor and vulnerable is equal to 90 to 95% of health to the most wealthy in the community. And that has been achieved by human ingenuity, <laughs> uh, not just sitting down and just plan, do, study, act. If you keep on practicing, you get better. Okay, why should we change the game plan in health? Here's a stark reason. The US spends 17.6% of its GDP on health. That's nearly one fifth, one dollar out of every five. Singapore, where, where I come from, spends 4%. If the US 
and has number six in the world outcomes. The US has number 37. And it's terrible. It's embarrassing. It's regretful. It's fully dysfunctional. Young people, this is your call to action that can bring, you have a role to play. So we have to change the game plan. You, you can ask me later how Singapore does it. Singapore only does it just by PDSA. Plan, do, study, act. Plan, do, study, act. And has been doing it 50 years. Singapore's celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. But when you do plan, do, study, act, you've got compound interest on learning. Just like Sandy said yesterday, compound interest over 50 years gets you somewhere. What have we done in the US? It's terribly sad and such a waste of human potential. And, and I want you to know that the leaders in the federal health sphere that I work with in defense, in health and human services, at the State Department, at Homeland Security, they are aware of this problem and they are working on it. But everybody has to work on it. Health is a team sport. We have to ask, did it work for you? Did it work for us? We have to ask that all the time. And Franchise for Humanity, I actually helped to co-found with uh, Kimberly King and Najee coming out of my experience with, that, um, with the Health Futures Group because it's so important. The voices in the community need to be heard, but they need to be heard effectively. It's not about picketing. It's about working on what's already out there and making it better. We convened a learning lab in at December 2011. That's three, four years ago. Of health leaders throughout the federal agencies with some private sector people involved. They came up with four key things in the roadmap for what we needed. Leadership, leadership, network leadership. And let me just go quickly into the um, we can be informed and benefit from the knowledge of leadership within the Department of Defense. It seems strange, but I, I, I now know the value of discipline <coughs> thinking. After 9-11, the US military realized that network warfare was what they were confronted with, and they needed to have net-centric leadership. We need to apply net-centric leadership into health, and we need to train it, and we need to think it. Bill Dahl is distributing cards where we actually develop 12 different competencies in network leadership, um, which, nice thing working with the Department of Defense, you can get to do all kinds of fun stuff like create playing cards for the competencies. Um, messaging with trust that we have to know that trust is the key criteria for any message that we give. This was developed inside your government. Government by the people, for the people. How does it go? <laughs> Off the people, by the people, for the people. Um, and R&D and innovation with clear sense of intention and purpose about human thriving and human health. And finally, personal health responsibility. We have to do it together. We can all do plan, do, study, act. Plan, do it, see what happened, decide what to do next. But within the Health Futures Group, we developed and took Doug Engelbart's ideas and put it into a feedback system, which is fully usable by the technology sector to start to begin to make sure the communication channels are happening systematically, that our strategies are being applied, and why they're being applied, and how they're being applied, and what are the goals are all consistent. And so we just have to start climbing the ladder. It's like did, Doug Engelbart said, it's a digital frontier. It's like the frontier of coming to California. We all just got to move forward and exchange ideas and trading posts like this. So I'm in my last slide. So are you ready to play the game for humanity? 
health is a team sport. Thank you.